Lounge with Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. And I'm Stephanie Grice, and our guest today is David Natale, who has been in the travel business for over 35 years, but he's best known as the River Cruise King. And for those of you who are watching our video, you can see he has the crown on. We are in the presence of royalty today. So uh, thank you so much, David, for joining us here. Well, thank you for inviting me. I was very flattered. I thought that was so nice. And I'm sporting a new crown. Somebody sent me, it's from a, from a secret admirer. It arrived in the mail the other day and I just think it's hilarious. <laughs> Plus it hides my bed head because you know, oh, I, because I have home office, I roll out of bed and I just like come here into my office. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. See, we all needed a crown. That's what we should have gotten in the past year when we're working from home. That's what we should have done. Exactly. That's, that's I mean, anybody can wear a baseball cap, right? That's so true. I yeah, figure... somebody's crown. make a crown. I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> well, we are excited. We're uh, thankful to have you on here because we're so excited to learn more just about um, your background, how you got in the industry, and just also how you have a business that's so thriving and successful um, today. So we're really excited to dive into all that with you. Oh, well, certainly. It's, you know, and it's been a really crazy ride. I, um, I started out at Disney World. I do live in Berlin now, but I grew up in Orlando. And um, we moved to Orlando from Philadelphia when I was 10 years old. And um, as a teenager in high school, I found myself as a waiter wait, uh, working at Liberty Tree Tavern in the Magic Kingdom. And it was a dream job for a teenager. Um, I was making, I was flush with cash, <laughs> making those Disney tips. And um, even though it was a long drive from, oh, you know what? I went to Lake Brantley High School, which right now is in the news because that's where that one guy who just got indicted for that oh, naughty, no. the naughty congressman. And oh, yep. I, I know what you're talking about. I am from oh, okay. Seminole that's County. Right. Oh, <laughs> nice. That's, so we yep. watched that stuff at dinner and laughed. But anyway, so it was a dream job, but I had to drive a lot. And um, then I worked for Hilton's during college. And, and so hospitality was in my blood. And when college was over, I started working for cruises only. And if you have Travify users or agents who have been around for a while, they might remember, you know, cruises only because Wayne and Judy, they kind of revolutionized the whole call center cruise only thing back in the early 90s. And um, it was a great place to get a, a good foundation and learn about cruises because up till that point in my life, my full exposure was Love Boat. <laughs> I, I had aspired to be like Julie McGoy. Um, and I was very excited to, to work at Cruises Only and I learned a lot. And then I got headhunted. I was working for Carnival Corporation and I moved up to Pennsylvania to be the regional manager of Costa. And I happened to be on the Costa Victoria giving a fam trip when I met a German. And long story short, the shipboard romance led me to moving to Germany less than six months later. <laughs> and Wednesday was my 22 year anniversary of living here in Germany. And uh, the German doesn't is not around any longer, but I'm still in Germany. <laughs> you still made it. <laughs> yes. So um, I moved to Frankfurt and I worked as an English trainer for the first decade, working at places like Deutsche Bank, Lufthansa, Ikea. And when the financial crisis hit, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And we just so happened to have a Baltic cruise booked uh, with Celebrity on the constellation and it made a port stop in Varnemunde, which was a part of Germany that I had not yet visited. And we lived in Frankfurt and Varnemunde is seven hours north up on the Baltic coast. So the big ships, they stop in Varnemunde to sell tours to Berlin, but most unsuspecting cruise passengers don't know that Berlin is two and a half hours away from Varnemunde. So we knew we weren't gonna go to Berlin. And during that stop, many of our fellow guests who we had been conversing with at Cruise Critic, they asked if they could come with us to one of the local cities named Schwerin. That was um, that year they were having the Federal Garden Show at the same time we were there. So we took the train ride. We had about 20 people from the ship 
that tailed behind us. We had a great time. And on the ride back, everyone kept saying, Dave, you should come back here and give tours. And I thought, did you drink too much today at the brewery? Because Frankfurt is seven hours away from here. <laughs> but the idea had, had, had a hook. And every day at the Friends of Dorothy meeting of the, you know, from Martinis on the ship, more people were saying it. And by the time that cruise ended, Friends of Dave tours had been born. And I went home, I immediately came back to Varnamunda and I founded this tour company. And um, I knew that it would work because I knew that there were a lot of independent travelers who like private tours that didn't want that long trek to Berlin. They didn't want cruise line tours. So I learned the local history. I made a web page, and suddenly it just like people started talking about it, Cruise Critic, and I was getting all of these bookings and had a great summer. The next thing I knew, I was in Rick Steves' Cruising Northern Europe books. I was number one at TripAdvisor, and it was just exploding. And I think it was my second year when everyone kept saying to me, Dave, you've been on 75 sea cruises. What do you know about river cruising? <laughs> and I would always say, that's where Holland America passengers go to die, <laughs> which is horrible. I know that's horrible. It's terrible to say. But back then I had, like many people, the false and wrong impression that river cruise was boring and just for you know people who were too old to do any other kind of travel. The truth could not have been more different. And um, as I started to learn, because I my cruise training kicked in, and I, I remembered we were very lucky at cruises only. We had a lot of trainings from some major industry people like Bob Dickinson. And I remember Bob saying one time to us, you are not selling $149 Bahama vacations. You are creating an entire career of cruise passengers that Carnival, with all of our family of cruises, whether it be, you know, Holland America or Seaboard or whatever, we're giving you the chance to move those passengers through itineraries and around the world. Well, everyone kept asking about river cruising and I remembered Bob's talk and I thought, huh, all those people have moved through all the itineraries and they want something new. And I started calling around and I came upon Emma Waterways who were the nicest. Some of the companies who shall go unmentioned wouldn't even talk to me because I wasn't a, an affiliated travel agency. But Alma, from the very first phone call, how can we help you? What's your idea? What, you know, what would you like to do? We would love to, to help you know, work with you. And I explained that I was a tour guide and all my guests kept asking. So with my cruise background, I wanted to form a group and send out an email to my, my clients and see what would happen. So they helped. And I sold 20 cabins in two weeks. <laughs> Amazing. It was crazy. So then my phone's ringing and I pick it up and hi, my name's Christine Cars. I'm calling from Mama Waterways. And it was, you know, the lady herself, Christine Karst, and she called to say hello, to um, thank me for selling Emma Waterways, and to explain, and I'll never forget this, she says, David, I'm German, and we never sell cabins in Germany, so I had to call and say hello and find out about you, and we're christening the Amicerto in two weeks, would you come down to, to Wilshofen and, and meet us? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'm always up for a party. So <laughs> I went, I met her and Rudy and Gary and the, you know, the whole team, the, the Basel operations like Leo and Wade. And that was the beginning of the best relationship of my life because it's now, uh, next year will be 10 years that I've been selling only Emma Waterways cruises. I have done 46 groups with them in that time. And about two years ago, um, Christine had asked me to come and be a speaker for Jackie Friedman in the Nexion uh, group. And we were sitting at the bar. It was Jackie and Christine and me. And Christine kept saying, well, you're our river cruise king because you've done more cruises than any other individual passenger. And I was like, oh, Christine, that is the best name ever. I'm totally stealing it. And that's how 
River Cruise King was born. And I like to laugh and say, I was named the River Cruise King by, you know, Christine Cars herself. And um, they just are the most amazing partners to work with as they have shown this year, unbelievable. Um, and that's also what brought me to Travify. I'm excited have, to have you. Yeah, well, thank you. I, you know, I'm so impressed with, with Travify. I, I'm a Virgo and I'm very, <laughs> and as my business, which really just started out with me wanting to put a couple groups together a year to augment my tour training has turned into the point where I'm now selling out ships. I'm, I have a, a fully chartered European tulip time to Egypt. I'm selling, you know, filling Africa and to keep everything organized is a challenge. And a couple of months ago, as I was doing some market research, I came, I started working with um, Sandra McLemore at Travel Marketing and Media. And they're the ones who told me about Travify as a solution, because I said, I need a better way to present my trips to my clients and to keep them pretty. And they said, well, why don't you use Travify? And I said, travel what? Yeah, <laughs> travel fly? Tra yeah, travel where? What? And um, so, yeah, so then I started, I, um, I started watching some of your YouTube presentations. And in the meanwhile, Sandra and her team started redoing my website. So I'm very excited. It went live yesterday and it's so beautiful. Um, so while we did that, with the left hand, the right hand, I started learning how to build trip books and to present them to my clients. I changed some other back office things that I was doing to simplify everything. And um, yeah, I don't sleep anymore. <laughs> but in the last couple of weeks, just every little change that I've made has corresponded with new excitement about traveling and people looking forward to the future and I don't know about other agents but my bookings are exploding um I have to apologize that I missed our meeting yesterday but I had 10 bookings yes come which is in. a good problem it is a great problem yeah but I was sitting here at my laptop just feverishly working away and building trip books and I looked up and I was like oh Stephanie the time and, and so, so, no that's that is, but that's a very good problem though. So it's it, totally it, fine. <laughs> I am not, I am not complaining. Um, you know, every, this whole time in COVID has been horrible on so many levels, but on the other hand, it has given many of us a time to take a breath, to look at what we're doing, what we're doing good, what we're doing not so good. And I had sent out a questionnaire to some of my top clients um, back in February. And I asked them, I said, why do you travel with me? What, why do you book with me? And I, I'm very lucky. I have around an 80% repeat rate. And I joke the other 20% just haven't had the time to go again. <laughs> um, but I have a very loyal, loyal base of customers. And so I felt that I would get honest answers. And I got great feedback. But the one thing that came back was, Dave, we love your expertise. Uh, you live in Europe. You know these trips better than anybody. You get perks for us that no one can get us, blah, blah, blah. But the information delivery could be so much better. We're always struggling because I also I put a lot of information in my stuff. I even think I'm overloading my Travify books. <laughs> <laughs> I sold a Seven River Journey. Um, a couple of weeks ago. And my very first trip book that I made was for that 46 night, seven river journey. And like, I, you know, I think that the program as I went and said preview, it was like thinking and loading, thinking. taking time, <laughs> but it worked, it worked. And my guests were ecstatic. They were like, wow, we've never seen anything like this to have an interactive agenda that has videos and, and I like, I put links to everything that I think will make the trip better. So like, you know, on the Danube portion, when I know they're going to stop in Salzburg, um, I put links to documentaries at YouTube about the making of The Sound of Music. I put for the stuff in Provence and English, I put links 
to uh, either pee off so that people can listen while they're looking. You know, I tell them, get some wine, sit down with your Travify book and click this link. And then Edith starts to sing all the great French chansons. And um, so there's so many things that I can do with my Travify book that I'm really, really excited. And I will tell you, this is, you did not ask me to say this. This is completely- No, authentic. totally. Like, <laughs> I really no, feel this way, it. 100%. I I'm have to say, broke. though, my new favorite thing out of that, though, is grab a glass of wine and look at your Travify itinerary. Yes, it's great, right? Perfect. <laughs> oh. Well, and it's so much fun. And I like I love the fact that um, they can have the link and they look on their laptops, but they also have the app. The app was one of the things that made me go, what? I can put all my stuff on an app. Yes. And, I've spent the last weeks kind of figuring out how to use, to best use and present the information and documents page with the agenda. And I, I figured now I do things differently when I'm presenting a trip to when it's booked. Um, all the information that I have in that first section that I can do with the settings, once they book, I copy that and then I put it in a, in a information thing below, but then in the top, then I just have like a link to their invoice, the top information, then the agenda can start. And then they can click on information and documentation. And in the bottom, I put like the out of passenger contracts, the, um, the future cruise credit forms so that it's ready. They can have those babies ready for when they go. I put, you know, the terms and conditions, my own terms and conditions. I started charging fees this year. Oh, was, yeah. Uh, so yeah. tell me about that. That is a hot topic of charging can fees. So you? yeah, I, well, so I told Sandra the other day that, um, she, her prompting and she laughs. She says, I didn't prompt you. I pushed you. And, uh, but her pushing, prompting, whatever me to charge fees has changed my entire outlook. And I will tell you, so today is the 20th of May. I started charging fees the third week of April. And I had a little, I had to go back and forth about it because my entire business is based around groups. And a lot of people that know what they want, they just want to sign up for my group. They know they're going to take the Emma Land package and they're going to ask for one. Um, and I had already trained them that they only get two Emma Air requests <laughs> or they have to pay me. Um, but um, I didn't want those people to feel like they had to pay a fee, especially if they've been booking with me for a while. But then there's the guests that they're not sure what they want. They need a lot of extra care and extra questions. And, and I also figured out with my Travify book, my do-it-yourself people who are my free guests who are going to just give me an order, they're going to, and they know that they're maxed out to 30 minutes of curation during their booking life. And that can include Zoom calling, emailing, whatever they need, but they get a basic Travify book, which is basically the book that I put together when I'm making my offer. They're not going to get their air put into it, not by me. They're not going to get their confirmation numbers or any of that kind of, they're just going to have that agenda, which is already pretty great. I mean, they even told me, well, we can live with this, but my other guests, so the ones that need the extra help, and extra attention, they're also going to get a detailed Travify book, which has their flight numbers, their confirmations, all of their details. Well, they're the people that are charging, I'm charging a fee, and I let the customer decide. Are you a low maintenance, 30 minutes or less customer? Great. Then you're in the do it yourself and you're free. Are you someone that needs more attention, wants more of my tips, and also what will distinguish the two books between Travify Basic and Travify Detail are my tips. Because, I mean, 46 River Cruises, I, and, I mean, I live over here, Barcelona, Amsterdam, Budapest, Madrid, these are like my second homes. So my tips are really the top thing that my guests love. Well, only my detailed books are going to have Dave's top 10 or Dave's top five 
port by port, place by place. So I gave them the choice and royal treatment is 200 bucks a cabin, which is a nice fee, but it's not terrible. It's, you know, it's, it's just there. Well, today is May 20th. And in the last four weeks, I've taken in $16,000 in fees. Wow. Oh my Be gosh. Just goes to show have, you like. Yeah. People who have been booked for a year, who have booked and rebooked are paying the fee, but they're choosing to pay the fee. So, um, and I've only sent the, the mails out with the questions to about a third of my client base so far, because it's a lot of work getting these trip books made. So yeah, the fees have changed the game. They have changed my attitude. They have changed my cash flow. Um, I went from zero income because friends of Dave, I mean, our tour business in Barnamunda, uh, you know, it was very hard last year refunding, refunding hundred plus thousand dollars or euros worth of tour fees. And then knowing that all the cruises, because I work two years out on my cruises, I'm already booking my 2023 trips now, all that wow. work gone. And so last year, Dave was a very depressed boy, you can imagine. Um, but all these projects and these things have given new life and vitality. And to have that kind of cash flow coming in for work that in large parts I've already done and people just appreciating it and saying, you're worth every penny. 200 is not enough, but it is. It's a fair honest, good thing. I mean, I have a great deal with Emma Waterways with my charters. For any people out there doing groups, you should be doing charters yes. <laughs> or half charters. Um, but it has been the best thing. And in the program that I'm working right now at, uh, at um, with Sandra, the Mar Travel Market Revolution, all of us, all of the agents who are there, and I guess some of them will be listening, they've started doing fees and it's making a big difference. So anyone out there who is not charging fees for your work, think it over. And maybe my approach would be the right way for you because if you have customers that you don't wanna, you're afraid to lose or you think aren't gonna come back to you, well, there's always the argument that they're not your ideal clients anyway, but I still say a client who is devoted to you is a great client. But if they have the choice and they then know what the parameters are to be free, then that's fine. But the majority of my people said, Dave, we want to pay your fee. And so give them the choice and make your services clear. And what I have now done in using my systems and I make task lists and I send mails in order, um, right after I make the first offer, I send them my services agreement and I let them decide, do you wanna book this as it is right now and be a do it yourself free person or do you want more of my great advice for $200? And $200 is nothing when people are spending 10, 15, 20, 30. I mean, I've got people spending $70,000 on their trips. What's $200? Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not that big of, of a difference. And another thing I noticed that you do too is, um, so you have your Calendly link set up or, or like a schedule set up. Yes. Um, and some of them you charge. So can you explain that too? Because I think that's a great idea to protect your time. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's also new. Like everything that I'm doing right now is new from, I call it my COVID rebuild. Um, I started using Acuity and um, giving people the chance to book a consultation with me. And this also works in with the whole fee or no fee thing. Um, I give people 30 minutes of consultation for free. And if someone has a really involved, important, you know, they, they want a lot of time or they need an hour, then I let them book an hour, but they pay 25 euros or $25. I, I'm not even sure what I've written, but I take a small fee and it just lets them know. And it sends the message that, Hey, my time is, you know, I only have so much of it. So I'm willing to give you a certain amount of it for free, but then I have a line. And when you go over the line, Dave needs some coin. 
And so I got to I got to pay for crown polish. You got to pay right? for the crowns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so and yeah, so far everybody it's it's working well. I have to get used to, you know, responding to calendars and schedules because I have not had to do that for a while. And um but it's working really really well. I love that. I think that's great because that's something that is such a hot topic. Even before the pandemic happened, it still was a huge thing oh, of definitely. fees, I, your time. Yeah. Yeah. I remember back in 19, let's see, 1995, 1996, when the airlines started this whole, we're not going to pay commissions anymore. And there was already then the big decision that airline um, travel agencies that had up to that point existed wholly by selling airline tickets and having corporate clients and they were living from the commissions, they had to suddenly start charging ticket fees and this and that. And the whole conversation started then even. And so I, I was allergic to it for a long time because I also didn't really view myself as a serious travel agent for a long time. I was just Dave, the fun tour guide who was putting together some fun groups with Emma Waterways and the guy who lives in Europe, who knows everything and everybody and um, made sure that everybody's trips were fun. But that has now exploded where I am indeed a grown up travel agent and I have really great knowledge, personal knowledge and personal context. And my guests know that. And so during COVID, it really became clear because my guests weren't the ones with sleepless nights, getting things, you know, canceled, suspended, getting credits done, making sure that airline things were canceled. And they weren't doing all that. I was doing all that. And I wasn't getting any money for it. And, um, and I, I remember very clearly the session with Sandra, it was just uh, six weeks ago. And they're like, is this your hobby or is this your business? And I was very content with the commissions and the things that I was earning. But when the commissions stop, you have to take a look and think, you know what, your time and your obligation to your client does not end simply because the commission is not there when you think it will be. You entered into an agreement to take care of this person and now you have to take care of them. And I'm very lucky and blessed that I, you know, I have a husband who has a great job and um, I've done well over the years. So I had planned for this. And I think any, anyone who's in the business of tourism or hospitality, you need to plan for hard times. And much like Emma Waterways did, they were prepared. Mm -hmm. They thought it would be low waters that would stop them from sailing one year. But um, who, who would have thought that a global pandemic of this magnitude would come? And I even remember I, my, my right hand, Christian uh, at Friends of Dave Tours, when he first started working for me, I, you know, I would, I, I would joke with him and say, because I, I take very good care of my tour guides. I, I kind of laugh right now at this thing that's going on in America about whether someone should get $15 an hour. I mean, I start my guides at 35 euros an hour. And, um, you know, I feel you have to share your riches with the people that are going to help you build your business because they have the right to live and have a happy life. And if you take care of them, they will stay dedicated to you. So when I was laying this out to Christian six, seven years ago, I said, well, you know, he said, well, what if something happens? And I said, dude, if something happens where the cruise ships stop coming to Varnamunda, we're in a big world of hurt that is going to be, you know, it's going to be so big that, you know, we're all going to be well, I, I can't cuss on your show, but you, you know the word <laughs> that I was going to use. Yeah, and, no. um, and sure enough, it was. Now, I don't know about other places, but Germany took care of us. Germany created some very good programs to help people in travel and tourism stay afloat. And, um, and I used the money that I got from the German government as a reward for my great years of tax paying um, to reinvest and redo things. And as, as a result, 
my bookings are up. And I don't count 2020 because 2020 is a lost year, but compared to 2019 for the same time period, I am six, 700% over what I was doing in 2019 here right now in 2021. Wow. So it is incredible. It's just, it's going to keep going. The boom that everyone calls it the travel boom and it's already absolutely. happening. And you know something? Travel agents are the new it great thing. Having a good travel agent today is now going to be like having a good stockbroker back in the 80s because a good, qualified, smart, connected, professional travel agent not only creates great travel opportunities for you and sends you on great experiences, but they watch your money and, um, like I don't have particularly price centric clients, but I have clients who value how far I stretch their travel budget. And they know, for example, they laughed when I said about my fee, they're like 200, you saved us like thousands on our last trip. And, but I maximize things for them and I will save in some areas and point out now you can buy that business class ticket. So you're still going to spend the same amount, but you're going to spend it better because I'm going to direct you. And, you know, I know things that I can apply for you here that frees up budget to do something great over here. And it makes your overall trip better. So good agents like that right now are gold. And the yes. smart ones are doing things like improving their services, like using Travify, finding ways to present their trip books to their customers, save their customers time. Um, because my customers, when they filled out my questionnaire, they're like, we can never find, we know you like you send great information, but we can never find it. Well, they can't say that now because now I even send them a mail that tells them how and what to label the link to save their trip in their browser. And I tell them when to download the PDF file and when, you know, to use the app and put that trip on their, their handhelds or their mobiles or their tablets and everything is there in that travel, beautiful Travify book. I am really like, I, I was, um, I love the German word schimpfing, which is complaining. I was complaining to Emma the other day, my friend Janet, who runs the, the, she's like the goddess of marketing. And I was like, I really need you to improve the um, daily trip agenda information that you're sending to Travify because I'm having to do a little too much work. <laughs> You know, like I like how we have we have some, uh, some some ears on the ground getting to them. I like I like that's yeah. that's what helps. Well, yeah, that is what totally helps is for us to be with those suppliers and make those connections so that we can work together. So that's awesome. I bring people together. Yay! So. I love it. That is well, awesome. That's what sold me on Travify that I could go and pull an agenda and then write in the name of the ship and then it kind of imports the agenda and. Okay, I'm greedy. I want more info. But what's there is already such a great foundation. And for someone who's never done an AMA cruise and they're putting something together for uh, a guest, that basic foundation information is already great. For someone like me that knows even the names of the tour guides that are going to be meeting people when they get to Dernstein, or maybe they're going to be on Lizzie's bike ride in Melk or whatever. I can put all that extra stuff in there like that. You yeah. save me so much time. Oh, it's well, thanks. And again, we did not tell him to say this. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. We never did. No, this is awesome. But I, what, what I think is so incredible is, okay, well, the charging fees first thing, that is such a hot topic. And so many agents, new agents, veteran agents trying to navigate around that. Yeah. But how you brought in, you're using Travify also. You're saying oh, you can get the simple one or, you know, we can give you, there's more tips and yeah, that's yeah. part of it. And that's cool. And I, and I, you know, um, in German, because we, we capitalize our, our nouns, I do that now in English and I capitalize certain nouns. So it's basic trip book, detailed trip book. <laughs> I love it. It's so awesome. That is yeah. really, oh, that's really cool. And thank you so much for sharing all of that too. I, yeah. pleasure. People will love this. Um, but one thing that I want to do before we wrap up, we always like to do rapid fire fun questions. Mm. So I have a few for I'm you. I'm scared, okay? No, Go they're ahead. good. They're great. Um, okay, so the first one, I've been dying to know this one. If you had to pick it, you have to pick one. What is your favorite cruise destination or just cruise? Oh, 
I know. I knew it was going to be a You're killing me. Can I have two? Well, no. I, yes, I, you can take two. You can take two if you'd like. I, I will allow it. I could give you a favorite cruise destination per month. Well, but, well how about, um, uh, yeah, yeah well, what about I, June? That's coming well, up. Well, I was going to have to say, I am, at the moment, I am so, when I did the Stars of Africa trip with Emma, it changed my life. And I remember back on that very first AMA cruise, back the very first one on the Danube, the very, very first one, one of the clients that was on that sailing, Barbara Haas, who's now done like eight or nine trips with me, on that sailing, she was looking at the Africa brochure. And she's like, oh, Dave, you have to do Africa one day. And I picked up the brochure and I'm like, $15,000 a person, $3,000. Are you kidding me? That'll take a while, Barbara. Well. Barbara was the first one who signed up for that trip when I offered it in 2016. And we went in 2018. It was actually my 50th birthday. We celebrated in the Cape Grace Hotel. I had a fully sold out charter. And that was the best, most exquisite trip that I had ever been on. And, and I've been on a lot of trips and a lot of places but I do love it. Um, and I feel guilty saying that because I love all the AMA trips and places. I love Vietnam and Cambodia. And I, I lived in the Rhine mine area for a decade. So I love the Rhine and the mine. And, you know, I've come to, to really adore Budapest and um, places like Amsterdam and Barcelona are second homes, truly, where I have best friends. And, um, I can walk into old fashioned in Barcelona and they're like, oh, Dave, you're back. And, you know, get hugs when I go into my favorite restaurants and stuff. So um, even if it's a little bit of a, of a betrayal to those other cities, um, Cape Town and the itinerary of Stars of Africa with the Chobe River is, is really That sounds amazing. And it does sound life changing. Yeah, that's really cool. And elephants, like right here, like, gosh. That is it. Oh my gosh. I can't even imagine it's on. I, I'm pretty sure it's on pretty much everyone's, but it has to be, if you like travel, that's a bucket list item. Absolutely. Well, you know, all the pictures on my website, all these African pictures on my website, they're all mine. Like oh, the cool. lion crouched right behind the safari Jeep. That was our second day in Botswana. And I was like, oh, I might lose a customer. <laughs> Get your video you? ready. Get it ready. <laughs> and, and what is your website, by the way? So people listening can go to it rivercruiseking.com. Perfect. Such an easy one to remember. You can't it forget is. it. Easy, right? Thank you, Christine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is, I love it. Again, in royalty. And um, so another question for you here is okay. what is the best meal that you've had while traveling? I know this will be a hard one too, probably. Well, actually, you know what? This one's not as hard because it also ties in with South Africa. So the Stars of Africa trip with Ama is incredible. But having had been to Cape Town before um, offering the trip, I was, the one thing I would change about their trip is I would do more time in the Western Cape around Stellenbosch because and Friendshook, because I think that's like geographically the most stunning place with all the wineries and the mountains. And so I offer this early arrival wine tour, West, I call it the Western Cape wine tour, um, and I take people to um, different wineries and there is, um, I forget right now the name because I'm on the spot of the exact winery, but we had a lunch in French Hook at this one winery that even now, if I'm not having a very good day, I will go and look at the pictures of the meal that we had. It was so beautiful. <laughs> I that can is still great. take, I can still taste it. Oh my gosh. That was amazing. That is awesome. I know. I love taking pictures of food and I go back sometimes too. And I'm like, oh, I can still taste it. <laughs> so good. And I feel bad. I should know their name of the restaurant, but at the, at the moment, like there's so many. And so many of them. Um, yeah. Just remember the thing. Yes. Um, so last one for you. This is my sure. favorite one. Okay. What is the craziest thing that's ever happened to you while traveling? Well, I can't say that on oh. this podcast, <laughs> but I will give you a, an appropriate one. <laughs> um, the craziest thing. Okay. The craziest thing that has happened to me while traveling is the story I tell about why travel insurance is so important. 
So, mm -hmm. and it, again, we go back to my very first AMA cruise. And so we're cruising down the Danube. It's night five. And this is back before AMA had introduced the chef's table restaurants to that back room. And back then it was just an extra lounge. And my group and I would go back there at night and bring some wine. And I had one of those little um, Bose speakers. So we would play music and sit back there. Well, one of my guests, Pat, she was missing and we went and she had fallen in the bathroom and she had cracked the vertebrae in her neck and she had to be flown home from that trip. And the thing about that was not only did I see how great Alma was with a guest who was in need and I saw how the travel insurance worked, but Pat went home and she recovered and she booked my Provence cruise for the following summer. So she came on my Provence cruise and I will again, never forget it because we were in Grignon and it was the truffle farm day and I had decided to stay behind. And Victoria came, the, the uh, uh, purser, she came, she said, I have to tell you something, please come in my office and sit down. And I'm like, all right, so but why am I sitting? And she said, one of your guests fell at the truffle farm and has to go to the hospital. And I was like, please let it not be Pat. Please let it not be Pat. It was Pat. Oh, <laughs> this time Pat had no. fallen and broken her leg in three places, had to be flown home from Avignon. And, um, and I'm only smiling because Pat went home, rehabbed, got better. And she booked my Portugal trip for the following year. <laughs> Yay! Keep and, going. But this is the point where everyone's like, you let her come again? And, but I love Pat. So yeah. she came, but we made a deal. And I said, Pat, if you make it all the way to Madrid, I will buy you dinner at El Baton, which is that old, the oldest restaurant in Madrid where Hemingway used to go. And they do that great crackling pig. Oh, cool. So that was the secret. You just have to offer Pat a free dinner at the end of the trip to keep her from falling and being emergency evacuated home. So it was the craziest thing that had ever happened to me. She asked me to go to Africa and I said, no. I said, no, Pat, because one, God, I don't know what would happen if we had to fly you home, but I already know all that bouncing when we're on safari is not good for your neck. So oh, yeah, you should do blah, blah, blah instead. And so she did that instead. Oh, <laughs> wow. What a story. Like, oh my that. gosh. She's great. She's coming. In fact, I was, they were just on our wedding cruise last year and I will see them again in April next year for tulip time. And I already, we already have agreed on buying her dinner at Indrapura for my uh, Indonesian rice tafu. And um, so that's our agreement now. It's, you know, a free dinner end. for no accident travel. Oh my gosh. That's, a, well, thank you for sharing that. And we love Pat too now from yes. hearing that. Like, go Pat. Go that's Pat. exciting. Yes. Well, no, that's so uh, crazy. Again, why insurance, but also like things like a pandemic, you know, now you think, oh, oh insurance is really important. You never know what's going to happen. Literally never know what's going to happen. It's so, true. Yeah. I am regretting, I am regretting the photos that me and my best friend, friend made with our Corona beer boxes on our heads. Oh, yep. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we, not we, aging were well. in, we were sitting in Gran Canaria hearing that people were not drinking Corona beer because they hurt. We're afraid the virus came from it. We're like, how dumb is that? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so we, yeah. we went to the local store and bought Coronas and drank them and put the beer things on. And then five days later, we're being evacuated. <laughs> it's it's crazy. I remember when we had a webinar, um, I think it was in March of last year and it was probably like the beginning of March. So it, mm -hmm. we were talked about it and we're just like, hey, don't overreact, it's fine. Literally two weeks later, like we're not at the office anymore everything's halted. Like, it's just, it's so insane. It's it really was. crazy. It was like dominoes. Like, you yes. know, you... yeah. Oh man. Super crazy. But I just want to say once again, thank you so, so much. I know this podcast episode is going to be amazing. And oh, that's nice. 
Oh, it's going to be really good. And, and I just want to thank everyone for tuning into this episode of the Lounge with Travify Academy. And thanks again to our special, da- uh, special guest, Dave, for joining us here today. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes. But we hope you enjoyed this conversation today and join us again. But for now, stay safe and we'll catch you on the next flight. Thank you.